in the healing. Amen, amen, bless God. I'm Pastor Alicia Williams. Welcome to Life in Christ International Church. This is our Sunday school time. We honor God this morning that he would bring us to our summer quarter. And we know that um, we just recently started in our new uh, Sunday school, school uh, resource. It's summer quarter. This is our second Sunday in our summer quarter. And the, the lesson for this morning it, it ties into the overall theme of this summer quarter, which is the righteous reign of God. And the title this morning of our Sunday school lesson is God's kingdom of peace. And so with that, let us open our Sunday school time this morning in and with a word of prayer. I do ask and encourage you to pray with me and pray with us here at the church. God is doing some uh, very, very phenomenal things for us. And we bless God for it. Um, we bless God for his goodness. Even as I was preparing for the Sunday school time, all I could do is just thank God for his goodness. All life long, God has absolutely and thoroughly and completely been good. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, this morning for our time together, for our time in your word, for our time of study. May your anointing, O oh great God, be upon the reading of your word. May your anointing, O oh great God, be upon this lesson. Father, we spend this time, Father, during Sunday school um, and, 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 and reading and studying and learning so that our lives, Lord God, would grow in you grow into your divine will, plan, and purpose all the more. And for that, Lord God, we bless you and, and we praise you and we thank you. Father, um, we pray for those that, that are on this channel. Father, the, the families that are on this channel, for those that are, 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 are listening to uh, uh, this time, Father, if they don't have a church home, if they, they're looking for a church home, if they're looking for life, Father, lead them to where you divinely purpose. Help them, oh great God, to get into the center of your will. Bless their lives, whatever their needs are. If they have financial issues, if they have health issues, if they have family issues, if they have, uh, they need direction or guidance, be the magnification, oh God, of who you are in them, for them, by them, and through them. We lift them up to you now, oh great God, that you would fully and completely show who you are. We thank you, Father. We love you, Lord God. We bless you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And so this morning we go into our Sunday school lesson. We already know what the title of our lesson is. So this is our agenda. For the Sunday school lesson, our devotional reading was John 16, 20 through 33. And the background scripture for our lesson this morning is coming from Isaiah 65, verses 17 through 25. We have two lesson outlines this morning. The first one is celebrating newness. The second one is the new reality. Our key text, which we're going to read in just a second, is Isaiah 65, 25. And that we know here at the church sets the foundation for our Sunday school time. It kind of ties everything into us so that we have a greater and better understanding of our lesson. We're going to recap um, our lesson outlines uh, real briefly. We're going to share weekly announcements and then we're close. That's our roadmap. That's our agenda for this morning. If you haven't already, please turn with me to the book of Isaiah 65. We're going to verse 25 this morning reading our key text, Isaiah 65, 25, in the King James Bible says, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. 
and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. When we look at our, our, our key text this morning, when we look at um, our foundational text this morning, very easily we see that entities that are normally at odds and at war with each other, to simplify it, we see that the prey um, and the, 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 the predator are dwelling together. How does this happen? It's happened because God has ordained it. And so as, as, as our Sunday school lesson teaches us God's kingdom of peace, we see it in the scripture. When God's hand is, 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 is at, when God's will is, is at its fullest, the predator and the prey will be at peace with each other. We live in a time where there is a deficit of the peace of God. We can talk about the economy, global economy, not just here in the United States. We can talk about global warming, where we have earthquakes and volcanoes and typhoons. We can talk about wars and rumors of wars, the, the war in Ukraine and, and the hostilities um, um, in, in, in East Asia with Taiwan and China, and, and, and the list can go on. We can talk about Israel and Palestine. We can talk about Ethiopia and, 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 and again, the, 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 the list goes on, the Tigray region. And so when, when, when our Sunday school lesson teaches us God's kingdom of peace, we pray for peace. We pray for God's peace. It is so immensely necessary and, and needed to, to be able to get ahead and advance um, 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 and, and, and live um, the way that God has intended. And so this morning, our Sunday school lesson is gonna teach us about God's kingdom of peace. And it takes us to our very first lesson outline, celebrating newness, where we're gonna read in Isaiah 65, 17 through 19. And it's gonna teach us about our second lesson outline, the new reality, Isaiah 65, 20 through 25. And so that's where we're going. I love this, this, this uh, lesson this morning. I love the theme of this lesson this morning. And the reason I say that is because we so very much need the peace of God. The, the manifestation of peace, not just being aware of it or understanding. We need God himself to pour out peace in the world. And, and so our Sunday school lesson provides divine insight on what that is and what that looks like. And so turn with me, if you haven't already, to the book of Isaiah 65. We're reading verses 17 through 19. Verse 17 in the King James Bible says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. Verse 18, But ye, but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. Verse 19, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. That's our first lesson outline. That's the, the basis for what the Lord is teaching us this morning about celebrating newness. So, so we see here that God has created and has created anew for his people. And in his creation, he's created the people rejoicing. He's created a, a joy for the people. So what is that saying to us this morning? God's kingdom of peace, it brings rejoicing. God's kingdom of peace, it brings divine joy. 
And I started out this morning declaring that we so very much in this day and age need the peace of God. We do need rejoicing. After a global pandemic, after our, our uh, global economic woes, after wars and rumors of wars, after global uh, 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 warming, and I failed to mention this morning about the fires in Canada. And, and so that's our prayer. That's, that's our wish this morning, recognizing and praying for God's peace and, 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 and praying for God's kingdom of peace. And that helps us to see that even in this world, we can experience the peace of God. And we thank the Lord for that this morning. So, Let's take a look. Let's see what our Sunday school lesson teaches us about our first lesson outline, which is celebrating newness. Our Sunday school lesson says the poem that began here describes a radically different future reality. But does this refer to the ultimate new creation that God will bring about at the end of time? Similarly worded in 2 Peter and Revelation, it tempts us to think so. Compare and contrast what's in Isaiah 66 and Hebrews 12. But the opening word for leads us to reconsider. This translates a Hebrew word that appears also in Isaiah 26 and Isaiah 43, where the translation is because, as in here's the reason why. As such, the word connects the thoughts of the verse at hand with those of the previous verses. Those previous verses announce two things. The end of the foreign denomination of Israel regarding Babylon, regarding Assyria, and the end of unholy rebellion by Israelites. The end of imperial aggression, which marks a drastic change that the language of the new creation is appropriate for. When added to the extreme language regarding elimination of unholiness, an end times interpretation of the destruction and replacement of planet Earth is very inviting. So our Sunday school lesson clears it up. It, it, it reminds us that it's easy to think that these verses are referring to the end of times, but it clarifies the four verses, the because, meaning that there's two things that this passage of scripture is, is focused on. One, the, and, I, and I'm, I want to read it again, the end of foreign denomination of Israel and the end of unholy rebellion by the Israelites. So we have clarity about what our Sunday school lesson is teaching us about celebrating newness. When you've been in bondage, when your home has been destruct, uh, destroyed, when what is familiar has been taken from you, we understand why they're, 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 the creating of newness is so important and how it brings such a phenomenal level of hope and, 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 and joy and rejoicing. And so um, that takes us into um, our second lesson outline this morning, our second lesson outline, which is the new reality. And so we're going to be reading our second lesson outline, Isaiah 65 verses 20 through 25. Verse 20 reads in the King James Bible, Isaiah 65, 20 says, There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being an hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. Whereas the days of a tree are the days of my people, 
and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Verse 23, they shall not labor in vain or bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Verse 25, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. When we pick up this, this passage of scripture, to me, it feels almost like meeting with the Lord face to face. It, it, it's like he's having a conversation with us one-on-one -on -one about who he is, what he does, what he stands for, and who we are to him. I so love how the Lord uh, meets us in this place this morning. Our Sunday school lesson teaches us about our very first lesson outline, a new reality. And our Sunday school lesson tells us that the new reality to come is too different from the old reality in important ways. One such way is a movement back toward an ideal of the first. Creation, long life. As we consider this change, we should take care to distinguish between human's life, which is 120 years, and life expectancy, which is 70 years. The high rate of infant mortality in the ancient world meant that life expectancy or an average was probably no more than 35 years. But if a person could make it to five, then the chances of reaching age 70 were pretty good. Therefore, the change of life expectancy promised in the verse at hand is a major one. We also note that this verse provides a clue regarding the alternatives presented in commentary on, on Isaiah uh, 65 verse 17, above the new heavens and new earth. Predicted, there are no, they are not the same as those predicted in 2 Peter 3.13 and Revelations 21.1. Since the renewal in those two passages will feature an end to death altogether, even so, the newness promised in our lesson text may serve as a type or pattern of the ultimate eternal reality to come. And so I love how our Sunday school lesson clarifies for us. It's easy to assume that this is talking about um, um, eternal life and, and how things are gonna be in heaven. But at the same time, it's referencing to the condition of the nature of the people in Jerusalem at that time. Our Sunday school lesson continues, and it tells us that um, where, where it talks about the sinner, this line um, um, is more difficult to understand. Our Sunday school lesson says, it says that clarity comes in the fact that the Hebrew verb translated sinner can also be translated miss, as it is in Judges 2016. Therefore, the idea is that someone who misses the mark of reaching age 100 is to be considered a curse. In that case, the line would simply amplify the idea of the previous one rather than adding a new idea. There is the, there's so much rich insight in this lesson and clarity. I love how um, we can bear with me just for a second, get carried away with the spiritual things, but our Sunday school lesson helps ground us in both areas. And, and it's telling us that 
we may be thinking about um, um, a, a long life in, in heaven and, and, and uh, uh, what, what the promise entails. But here our Sunday school lesson is, is reminding us, but for these people, their, their, their infant mortality rate, for these people, they would only live to 35 under the Babylonian uh, 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 oppression. And if if they if a child lived to be five, then they have a, a good chance, but it wasn't promised to see 70 years of age. And so that's the reality that, that, that our, our Sunday school lesson is reminding us of as we embrace this passage this morning. I love how uh, the clarity for our Sunday school lesson unfolds for us this morning. I love how um, it's it's made plain that yes, it applies to us. Yes, it applies to uh, 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 all of uh, eternity, but it also applies to the condition of the people at that time. And I want to, I normally don't do this, but I do before we close out, want to read our conclusion this morning about these two lesson outlines and about our Sunday school lesson. Our Sunday school lesson tells us that Isaiah 65 is a visionary text that should inspire its readers to see beyond both past failures and seemingly valid temptations of the present. It invites us to imagine a different world than the one we inherited, a world in which old wounds will be healed and the God-given talents of all are used to bless others. This text offers a vision of a world in which the communication between God and humanity remains open, free, and life-given. I want to read that again. This text offers a vision of a world in which the communication between God and humanity remains open, free, and life-given. And so with that, we're going to close out our Sunday school time this morning. Um, we were able, during this Sunday school lesson, to cover both of our lesson outlines, celebrating newness. We read Isaiah 65, verses 17 to 19. We learned that the, 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 the children of Israel were oppressed. And, and we learned that God had promised to, to give them newness, and that newness would come with rejoicing and joy. And, and, and our second lesson outlined the new reality. It taught us about uh, 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 how um, it's easy to think that, that these passages are, are teaching us about the new heaven and the new earth. Um, but specifically, it, 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 it uh, clarifies that it's talking about the life expectancy of these people where their, their uh, infant mortality rate was high and it was a, 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 a blessing for a person to live to see uh, 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 70. And, and, and if a child made it to five, I love how our Sunday school lesson helps us to get the depth of a culture, get the depth of the people and the situation of that time. These are two very important lesson outlines this morning to help us understand uh, our Sunday school lesson. God's kingdom of peace. It, it points to what happens when you have lived uh, in oppression by the, by the Babylonians. It points to how God ministers to the heart and the life and soul of his people who have experienced such a thing and how he restores and how he brings newness and how he, he, he fosters a new reality. And we honor God for that this morning. I always like to take just a few minutes to read our Sunday school prayer. And um, after that, I'll share um, our weekly announcements. Our Sunday school prayer for this morning says, Creator God, who made the heavens and the earth and everything in them. Create in us new hearts, new hands, and new feet, so that we may think as you think. Do what you give us to do, and go where you call us. 
take from us the tendency to think too small and to shrink back in fear. We ask this in the name of the one who has promised to usher in a new heaven and a new earth, your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. What a rich prayer. What a way to uh, finish up our Sunday school lesson this morning on God's kingdom of peace. As we close out this morning, um, I do want to remind us to govern ourselves accordingly. Of course, here at the church every Thursday evening at 730, we have our midweek Bible study. This month, the Lord has us in the month of sanctification. So what that means is that all month long, we're gleaning and learning from the word of God, what the Bible teaches about sanctification. As I shared during our, our, our midweek Bible study lesson, yes, sanctification is directly tied to sin and sitting. But here, why would we want to wallow at that level when the Lord can show us divine revelation about sanctification? The sanctification in the mind, the Lord has already ministered to our life about that here at the church. Sanctification of the heart, the Lord has already ministered to our life about that here at the church. And so it's, 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 as the word of God says, precept upon precept. It is, as the word of God says, line upon line. And so as we close out this morning, I do want to uh, uh, remind us that our end of month worship will be on Sunday, June 18th. That will be Father's Day. So we'll be celebrating our fathers on that day as well. And we are and have shifted to our youth outreach. And so our youth ministry will host a summer splash. Um, that's going to be on Saturday, July 8th um, from 10 to 3 p.m. And it's just the church um, hosting a few kids uh, to take them to Ackworth lunch and, and just have them have their, their kid day. And here at the church on August 4th, that's a Friday evening at 6, the church will host its back-to-school giveaway. And so I ask that you all govern yourselves accordingly. I ask that you continue in prayers and our international pastors as well. We thank God for them. And so with that, we're closing out. We will see you Thursday evening for a midweek Bible study lesson. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. May his angels encamp about you. May the revelation of the Lord God manifest itself in your life in full now and forever. God bless you. We'll see you Thursday evening.